Hello and welcome to another Universal Transmissions video. As you already know, the test bench from our last video, I'm going to walk you through a complete measurement in this video. As an example, we are going to test the efficiency of a new Gates carbon drive belt. Later on, we will also discuss the other scenarios that we tested more in detail. The first thing we have to do is to calibrate the test bench. That means we run it without the belt. This way, we can determine the friction of the test bench itself, as it has bearings on many positions. We need to do this so we can subtract these disturbances from our measured values later. After that, we can install our belt to the measurement section and finish assembling the measurement area. As we want to create a model as realistic as possible, we only compare single speed configurations. We choose the Gates Carbon Drive CDX belt and the Shimano HG93 chain. Both drivetrains are set up to the correct tension and are installed perfectly straight. And by the way, we only compare sprockets the same diameter, not the same number of teeth. So in our case the ratio is 50 by 26 for the belt drive and 42 by 22 for the chain drive. That results in the same gear ratio of 0.52, but it makes sure we have the same wraparound angle for both drivetrains and to generate comparable losses. Now that we assembled the measurement area and set up the right tension and the correct belt line, we can start warming up the system. We do this to ensure perfectly steady data later with no deviation over time. At that point, we can start the actual measurement. So the first measurement will take place with zero load on the brake. The more torque we will adjust on the brake, the more power we will achieve in the measurement area. As we know from the last video, the brake generates the amount of power that the rider has to put into the drivetrain to overcome all the resistances while riding the bike. Now we are going to increase the torque on the brake step by step. This way we generate more and more power in the measurement area. So let's have a look at one of those measurement points as an example. What we see here is the live sensor readout of our continuous measurement at a stationary power rate of 150 watts in this case. Let's pause it for a second. We can see the values of the revolutions and the torque on the input sensor displayed in red as well as on the output sensor displayed in blue. Simultaneously, the program calculates the input and the output power and the difference between them too. You can also see that these curves are very rippled and we can't do anything with them until we smooth them out. This is the result of our stationary measurement after 90 seconds. To get a result we can actually work with, we then approximate the curves with two best fit straights. This gives us a very accurate linear function of our values as we are measuring in a stationary process anyway. In the end, we can receive the average torque, the average momentum and also the average rotational speed. If we use these values, we can easily determine the power consumption in the measurement area, which means we can determine our efficiency. To do so, we determine the midpoint of the functions from the input and the output power and put the results into the formula we know from the last video. This way, we will receive the first of many data points. 98.5% of efficiency at 150 watts in this case. Just as a reminder, in this coordinate system, the x-axis shows the power in watts and the y-axis shows the level of efficiency starting at 90%. The next step would be recording and calculating more data at different power rates, beginning at around 25 watts up to over 700 watts of power. After we calculated every single measurement point, we can combine them to one graph as we can see it here. Now what we have here is a complete figure of the efficiency factor of our new belt drive at any given power rate. We can see a very typical curve for any mechanical transmission with lower efficiency level at low power rates and increasing efficiency at higher power rates. Now we can start comparing this efficiency graph to the efficiency of the other drivetrains such as a new chain or the worn down drivetrains we also want to test. These are the six scenarios that you already know from the first video. 
I would like to talk about one detail that we didn't address there. If we have a look at the brand new drivetrains, it's the very low power rates below 30 watts where the belt has an inferior level of efficiency indeed. This is because it needs a certain tension to work properly, whereas the chain may always have some slack. This tension creates some friction losses, but they get smaller percentage-wise as we increase power. Actually, this character of the belt sometimes leads to the assertion that the belt is less efficient because some tests have been performed without any load. But as soon as you apply a realistic stress, these losses generated by the belt tension don't affect the efficiency. As we can see, the worn down chain drives drop that much in performance that now the belt has a higher level of efficiency even in the lower power range. To show you what difference the belt tension actually makes, let me display the curves of a loose belt and an overly tight belt in relation to the properly adjusted one. As we expected, this mainly affects the efficiency in the lower power range. At the higher power rates, the efficiency does not depend on the belt tension anymore. Of course, we were interested in the characteristics of the chain too. So I would like to show to you some more scenarios that we tested on the 100% worn down chain drive that you can see here. We ran the same measurement again, but this time gave the exact same chain some oil before. After that, we replaced the chain on the old sprockets, as it is recommended by the manufacturer. It shows that the oil helps a little bit to regain efficiency. Replacing the chain on the old sprockets gives an even better result, but gets nowhere near a completely new chain drive. In comparison, this is the curve of the 100% worn down belt drive that has not been taken care of at all. You can see that the old belt still performs better than the chain that we just replaced. So on that conclusion, I would like to thank you for watching our videos and say goodbye.